is everything really so bad as we think it is at the moment? Uh, first of all, hands up, let's have a bit of light in the room. Hands up those people who think that things really are pretty bad at the moment. <laughs> right, I'll go off now then. <laughs> How about hands up people who think things are not too bad, but not brilliant. Hands up those who think it's really bloody good and things are going really well. What were you drinking at lunchtime? <laughs> but whatever it is, perhaps you'd like to pass it round to the rest of the people in the audience. The reality is that what we are experiencing now is something similar to Back to the Future. Now, those of you who've seen Back to the Future will remember it well. As the future gets closer and things go backwards, people start to disappear. Remember from McFly as he gets closer and closer and the deadlines get tighter and tighter and suddenly people start to disappear. Well, look at this motley bunch. How many of, those, of that group, it was the G7 taken just over a year ago, how many of them are still around today? Well, they're still alive, yes, but... Well, um, first of all, do shout out. Well, we've got, on the far left, we... Uh, how, who, who was the first one to disappear? Anyone take, get, take, care to take a guess? First one to go was Stephen Harper of Canada when he lost his election. He was rapidly followed out the door by David Cameron after the Brexit referendum. After the Brexit referendum, then we lose, well, Matteo Renzi of Italy because he didn't really see the way the wind was blowing and he thought it would also be good to have a referendum, having clearly not seen what happened to the other guy. After Renzi goes, we lose, it's a bit of a toss up, we probably lose um, Barack Obama. Now we knew he was going, but he still went anyway. Then we lose Francois Hollande. He hasn't gone yet, but he said he's not standing again, and that's something else that you may want to question about uh, in a little while. We'll ignore, th there is no press in here, are there? No, good. Um, we'll ignore the two on either side. Um, that's Jean-Claude Juncker of the Commission. That's Donald Tusk of the Council. Uh, we'll ignore them because nobody ever elects them to anything, but they seem to get re-elected and stay on forever. So, if you take... It's a bit like those insects you find in the bath. You can't get rid of them. Um, if you take that group and you ask, what's happened in terms of change? That's what you're left with, effectively. You're left with Angela Merkel, and she faces an election this year, and Shinzo Abe, and he faces an election next year. So anybody who says that change doesn't come quite quickly and quite fiercely is slightly wrong. But the issue is, are things as bad as we think they are? Or have things really got to get a great deal worse? <laughs> Discuss something that, it's a true, and listen, I'm not saying good or bad. I'm just telling you, he won fair and square, and large parts of America voted for him, and those same parts of America are absolutely delighted, except when the Oscars went wrong. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, if you can't even count the Oscars, what hope have you got for counting an election? Which is why this particular tweet, you know what the problem for the Oscars was? Millions of Academy members voted illegally. The reality is, though, large parts of America absolutely loved what he did. And the reason was this document, Donald Trump's contract with the American voter. Now, it was published about a month or two, a few months before the election. And has anybody in this room read it or seen it? Right. Do me a favor when you get home. Ah, you have, sir. Oh, God. There has to be one bloody person in the room who's always read it. <laughs> so you read it? Yes, I've read it. You did? Yes. Why? I, I, well, I was interested. Stand up, stand up, let people see you. <laughs> yes. 
I was interested in the U.S. election. I wrote a program both for Hillary Clinton and this gentleman. You wrote a program? Yes, and you, you find it on the internet. Interesting. Yes. So you read it? And I wrote a chronicle about who I hoped won, and I lost. <laughs> so I'm gathering he did, that the one you hoped won didn't win. Yes, that's right. She didn't win. Ah, did you that? Let's have, have a seat. <laughs> he said he was going to do it, and he's done it. Now let me ask you, in your experience, members of the jury, how many politicians have ever done what they said they were going to do in the short period of time that they've managed to do it. Anybody care to name a politician? Lenin. Sorry? Lenin. Vladimir Lenin. Lenin. Yes, but he did also kill a large number of people on the way. I'm not entirely sure we would want to sort of uh, take him as being a, a prime example of good democratic politics. But I'll take your point. And I'm not even sure he did it within a month. It took him a few years before he'd massacred half his country. <laughs> Anybody else? The silence was deafening. You see my point? So you ask, and when you go home tonight, just think about, well, this politician that the Americans elected, that we in liberal Europe think is an ab aberration, abhorrent, horrific, uh, the, you know, the Antichrist, the worst thing we've ever seen, in large parts of America, they are saying not only is CNN fake news, they are saying, well, Donald Trump has done what he said he's going to do, and if the administration looks a bit rocky, and if he hasn't released his tax returns, and if there are some questionable issues relating to his business dealings, so be it. A lifetime of seeing politicians break their promises has left them feeling this is one who's going to do it. Sure. NATO. Let's talk about NATO. How many people, put your hand up, how many people believe that every member of NATO should pay the, the guideline amount of 2% of, of their GDP? Put your hands up properly so I can see this. All right, now put your hands down. How many people think that they shouldn't pay the 2%? Is it you? Yeah. You don't think they should pay the 2%? No. But that was what they agreed when they joined up. I know, but some, uh, some countries can't pay so much. But most can. The issue of Brexit. Now, again, Brexit is an example of what happens when the people feel they've not been heard when they've not been listened to, when they've been ignored. Brexit happens in... How many people in this room thought Brexit was going to take place? How many people didn't think Brexit was going to take place? How many people bothered to listen to any of the people who thought Brexit was going to take place? <laughs> what happened was, I, the, the CNN said to me, we want you to go to the UK. So we took the Questmobile, a 1970s Bedford van from the same era as when the UK joined, and we drove round Britain. And what did we hear? We heard exactly the same things, exactly the same comments, exactly the same views. People aren't listening to us. People are ignoring us. The elites think we're stupid. The elites think we don't know what we're talking about. Time, by the time it got to Brexit, or the night of the referendum, can I say for certain I thought Brexit was going to happen? No. But I was bloody sure it was going to happen. I was bloody sure. I'd spoken to... I couldn't... There were, it, where we took this picture was in a little East, East Lincolnshire market village. We couldn't find one person that wanted to stay in the European Union. Now, of course, we could go to the central London, but if we went to the north, to Stoke, if we went to the west, if we went south, it was the same thing again and again and again. The Brexit referendum will see the UK leading, 
leaving the EU. Italy lost a government as a result. It was by far and away one of the worst years. But is it something that we should be depressed about? This is what Bill Gates said two years ago. Let's read it. By almost any measure, the world is better than it has ever been. People are living longer, healthier lives. Many nations that were aid recipients are now self-sufficient. By 2035, there will be almost no poor countries left in the world. So now I ask you again, the very first question that we started off with. How bad do you think the state of the world is? Hands up, those of you that think it's in a really bad way. <laughs> right, any question? Go on, anybody, somebody else have a question? Yes, sir. Uh, here we are. I've got a microphone. May as well make myself work. You can use mine. <laughs> You're right, you won't be needing it. <laughs> <sighs> Couldn't you afford a seat clear of the front? Never mind, don't worry. Next year, maybe. Have the microphone. Yeah, um, OK, thank you. Yes. How long will, uh, will the United Kingdom consist? I mean, um, oh. Scotland uh, oh. may be coming out now. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Tricky. <laughs> well, yesterday, over the last week or two, the Prime Minister, I mean, the, the First Minister of Scotland has you know, pretty much made it clear a second referendum is inevitable. But the problem is Nicola Sturgeon can't call a referendum. Only Theresa May can call a referendum. And she's made it clear she's not going to call a referendum. So, yeah, you're right. The, the, the scenario is being set up for a really nasty, brutal, unpleasant mm. battle in the UK between the Scots and the Brits over, uh, and the English over uh, uh, a referendum. Now, I will say one thing that the Scots have deceived themselves on is this idea that they can leave the UK and immediately join the EU. Now, the EU has been quite clear about this. There can be no automatic Transfer. Admittedly, Scotland already meets most of the, of the or all of the criteria, so it wouldn't be difficult. But they would have to apply like any other country to, to, to join the EU. And guess what? Guess which country might oppose Scotland joining? Anybody take, take a guess? Which country would not want to see an independent Scotland joining the EU? Anybody guess? Sorry? Spain. Because they're afraid of the Basques. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> Absolutely right. The Spanish. Mariana Rajoy has absolutely no wish to see an independent Scotland because the Basque and the Catalonians will immediately say, well, if the Scots can leave the United Kingdom and immediately join the European Union and become part of a bigger, and it's not just as, then you've got the Walloons in uh, Belgium, you've got uh, across the whole continent. So, to, brilliant question, sir, but the answer's no. <laughs> Any other questions? There must be somebody here who has a question. Stunned into submission. Yes, sir, over here. You speak like uh, Donald Trump. Uh, you, you, I, I, uh, oh, here we go! Here we go! <laughs> here we go! Bring it on! He's going to accuse me now. I tell you, no, no, gonna, no. You're going to accuse me of being a Donald Trump supporter. No, 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 no. Uh, Why you, are you? you? No, uh, no, no. Sorry, uh, uh, I don't think you're a Donald Trump supporter. <laughs> but it, Why, are it, you a supporter of Donald no, Trump? No, 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 not at all. Why not? Uh, because, <laughs> because... I mean, are you not in favour of putting your... I'll show you how this argument goes, by the way. Are you not in favour of putting your country first? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm exactly, you are, <laughs> right. And are you not in favour of good jobs for good people, good working people? Yes, yeah. of course you are. Yeah, yeah. And 
Do you sometimes feel that your country has been taken advantage of in trade negotiations? And, you know, let's face it, jobs have been exported. If I look in parts of Norway, there are clearly areas. I mean, let's just take, for example, your oil industry. Your oil industry, which has been so badly affected by the cut in oil prices. But you didn't call it cut in oil prices, did you? No, it was those horrible people in the Gulf. In fact, it was the Saudis who insisted, insisted <laughs> on continuing production. And now there are thousands of people in Western Norway who are suffering. And there are businesses across this country that are in terrible trouble because the Saudis, you see? Now, sir, are you in favour of it? <laughs>